Hey you guys, do you ever feel like you need a little do-over? Well that's what this video is all about because I videoed it last week and I, I just didn't like the way it turned out and I thought I couldn't remember enough names of the transplants in the garden and so we're going to do this on a take two and they're seven days older so hopefully you'll be able to see the transplants so much better. All right, come on with me. Here we go. We're in what is known as the salsa garden and it is phasing out for summer. Um, things did not go very well in here because we had red spider mites, uh, which was the cause of a lot of heat and a lot of drought. Whenever you have those two things combined, you get a lot of red spider mites. And we had it terrible on the Brad's Atomic Grapes cattle panel and it just spread like wildfire. I treated it, but not aggressively enough and maybe not as often. Uh, maybe you can see, I'm, ho I'm holding it into the light on purpose so you can see though there's little bitty webbing and spiders in there, right? Technically, they're not spiders, they're mites, but that's where they are and where they live. And I have another breakout on my jet stars right here. So, hey bud. Oh, but he got another tomato. That's another part of my problem. But, um, like, I have the vintage wines here. I, I experimented with a lot of heirlooms, including heirlooms I knew had not worked before, but was given them a second chance. And voila, they just still didn't work second chance. So, we're going to um, not experiment a lot in this upcoming growing season. In Florida, that would be like starting seedlings around September and transplanting sometime in October after the threats of hurricanes pass. And so that's that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna go for a tried and trues this winter. Things that can take the up and down fluctuations. So it'll probably be a whole lot more hybrids in this mix than heirlooms. And I hate, hate that, but that's how it's gonna go. Look at that, there's my first Jet Stars ripe one. I had another one ripe last week, but it was in one of these fruit bags, and I think I put the fruit bag on a little too late, and it was already decomposing and had larvae and junk like that, and that's so gross. So, in some ways, I wish you had seen uh, parts of the garden last week, because it looked even better than this. We're getting rain, but it's a little too um, hot and dry in another week of stuff. Oh my goodness, do you see it? We've had quite the wind, and that's another casualty. I'll show you the second, well actually the first one that I noticed. This is the second one I've noticed. Um, I have, I'm underneath pine trees. And if you don't know this, pine trees make widow makers. And what does that mean? Okay, so, um, they just drop random branches. Now we had wind, so I, that explains this, but sometimes they'll just drop randomly and uh, people who are under them, which used to be in the whatever 1800s or 1900s when the phrase and cliche began, uh, the nickname began, uh, it, it was men under the trees and maybe they were resting or working or whatever, but the limb would fall on them and kill them and that would make a widow. So that's how the term Widowmaker came along. This is an emerald apple, and I had, this vine was filled with emerald apples. Now, Buddy's gotten several. I've got one in the fridge. That looks pretty good, doesn't it, huh? Um, but we, we won't tarry too long out here. Here's some more Jet Stars. Here are my, these are Jaguar marigolds and regular ones. These are so beautiful. They have just volunteered to come right back from last year's seeds that transplanted themselves. Ah, oh, look, buddies are 18, no, 19 month old boxer. I found a toy. I did put some peppers right there. So it looks like they kind of made the transplant. And we have four clocks. So it's not quite time. It is four o'clock, but you know, they don't come right at 401. So I'm waiting for those. These looks like they'll throw the blooms out tonight. But I wanted to share with you 
really cool my peppers. Uh-oh. No, nope, that's a volunteer bean. I guess it's this one. Fell over. That's an Alma Paprika pepper. It's um, smaller than a baseball. They don't get much bigger than that. And this one will start turning orange. Really love those. Here's another one right here. It's sort of mixed in with the beans. That's crazy. But there you go. Lovely little pepper. Very prolific. I really like them. What Jack and I will do with these peppers is we'll take them off the vine and or off the plant and then we will go ahead and put them on the smoker and give them a nice smoky smell to them, dry them, and then grind them. I think last time I did a video of the pepper side of the garden, um, this was just an itty bitty baby and it's looking really nice. This is a bell pepper and I believe these are from last year's seeds. So that would be the bull bullnose bell pepper, sweet bell pepper. And I want to say that came out of Baker Creek seeds, I believe. All right, moving on. We put in a couple yellow, you only live once. There should be four, yep, I see four little plants in there of um, sweet bell peppers. And then, oop, let's carefully, hold on, I got lots of obstacles over here. Let's go over and see the corbachi peppers. This originally came from Baker Creek also, and I saved last year's seed. I had a big old bush. We had a wonderful season, very productive with drying the peppers and uh, making seasoning out of them. I'm still using that up and they were delicious. They are much better I will say if they put their color on. The red ones and orange ones are so much more delicious than just the plain green. And then these are slippery silk beans and they are volunteers that fell out of my hand or just never did get cleaned up. When I turned the soil over they came back up I kind of picked them late in the season, and so I'm sure I lost plenty. Obviously, I lost almost like the whole row here. And we had corn. If you've been with me for a while, you know we had corn in this section before. And look, I got a volunteer spring corn. I did not plant that. Pretty cool, though. Okay, in this row right here, we have the organic hybrid hot pepper. Those were started March 11th and transplanted May 11th. So the, the, they look like they need some nutrition, although I thought I put some in the ground, but it definitely looks like it needs some more. Then I tried transplanting some Friarello di Napoli back here. They didn't take, but I got one. And then I had a leaf push in here, but it looks like it's not going to make it. So it, we're just done. And what have we got there? Oh, we have sweet habaneros. Very little though. They're still babies. I've lost a couple I can see. I lost whatever was in here, but I have this one. Things come and get them. Squirrels and whatever. It's very hard to keep babies. But they can't grow forever in the cups. So maybe I should up pot them before I put them out here. And plus I was very late in transplanting this year. May 11th is way too late. But that's how the cookies crumbled this year. Here I have regular Clemson spineless okra. And I planted like 18. I think I ended up with five or six in this whole row. Very sad, but that's my bad. That's what I did wrong. Okay, next we have, in this area, I have some red bell peppers. And those are, those are actually from Save Seed. Again, sowed March 11th and transplanted February, uh, May 11th. And then I have six touchdown bell peppers. Where are you guys? Hold on, let me turn around to compare with my notes. Okay. So the red bells were in the back. Then these are touchdowns back here. Touchdown bells. And that's the sweet bells. 
is uh, the red bell peppers. And then right here is going to be the Mama Rosa roasting peppers. I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, at least five of those. Maybe that's easier on the eyes. The sun is really competing, probably hurting your eyes. Um, this was also filled with peppers. We got rid of the Aros Compollo from last year. And we have just a four or five of the Martinez Chimeo plants right here. I have some leftover lettuce going to seed. I have Danvers half long carrots that are ready. I'm just not in a hurry. I have Tabasco right here. I have to, a little baby Tabasco in there. I have, oh, the big elephant in the room right here. This is cauliflower, snowball cauliflower, but it doesn't look like it's producing a head, just like my broccoli up front is not producing a head. It's just too doggone hot. And look at the foliage on these. They're happy as can be, but they're refusing to put any heads on. And I thought I was gonna get one more, sort of like a late season on these, and it's not happening. These are just uh, little deep purple onions, sort of bunching onions, if you will. This is a red onion. It's not really putting on a bulb. Uh, no, still doesn't feel like it. Oh, it goes down forever. Huh, interesting. But it's a nice, it's a nice stock there. It's not making into a, a bulb. That's harder to do in Florida. I haven't mastered that yet. And these are also just regular white bunching onions. Now, Lori from the Wildings Landing, if you're watching, these are your, not this, this is Market More Cucumber, but the rest are all your loofah babies. Some are doing better than others after the transplant. We'll have to work on nutrition there. Mulch sure they're happy. I've got to still bring the mulch in. I have not been able to get in my garden too much lately, especially with this wind dropping limbs right out of the sky. Over here we have red Malabar spinach. That's awesome. That should grow good. My goal is to actually use some of the cattle panels during the summer. Usually they'll sit until the fall, but I really want to use the cattle panels a little bit better this year. More consistently over a longer time. And we're also going to ditch a lot of the heirlooms and we're going to go with hybrids. Since our weather is fluctuating hot, cold so much, I need something that can take the hot in the winter because heirlooms just only like the cold. Here we are, we are in my trellis garden area. Look at these, these are the Socrates. I've already picked and picked and picked. They're still coming. There's, uh, the, looks like the heat's stopping some of the growth. But they, all girls, this is a greenhouse kind of cucumber. Yeah, it's time for them to start phasing out. But they are nice cucumber, I just started them late because I was counting on my Boston pickling and boy, they were disappointment. And I don't blame the, them, the seed company or anything. It's this area with the trellises, it's just a difficult soil. And uh, it's between two pines and it's highly acidic, so I need to fix my soil. So back to why I came over here. Do you see this trellis? You see that big old dent right there? This was it and it went all the way out but uh, out to this trellis but I've already picked up the smaller parts I just left the large parts that came down hit it so incredibly hard I'm so thankful that I was at, out here at all on Wednesday when it happened I was having breakfast and then lunch with a friend we fellowshiped we had a great time together and then Jack and I had a great evening together and I never stepped foot in the garden and God protected me from this. It, it totally whacked the uh, wind chime or whatever. It's not really wind chimey, but it just is a dangler. Yeah, it knocked it completely apart from this side. Hit the ground. Cucamelons are okay. 
the eggplant, man, I don't know what's going on. I think it's just, again, this soil between the pines is not, it's nothing the eggplants like at all. Oh, I got some nice beans coming. Look at that. That's pretty. I see lots of beans over here. So that's good. I, I only had a few of these beans and I put them out um, just as a last ditch somewhere, you know, for them to grow and uh, fill the trellis because I didn't know if the eggplant would work. But uh, look. Oh, there's a cucamelon. I don't, how do you know when they're ready? Okay, we're just, oh, here's a bigger one. Let's try this one. Oh, that is so cool. So cool. Okay, you guys are going to get to see me do my first cucamelon. Oh, cool. Tastes a lot like a cucumber to me, but so cute like a watermelon. Oh, man. I need one for Jack. He needs to try. I like to experiment on him and see what he thinks. Oh, okay. So when this next one goes, well, where'd it go? We'll uh, give it to Jack whenever it shows up around here again. I've already lost that first one. Hmm. Silly. That's how they they sneak up on you. Because they know you're looking for them. Do you have that problem in your own garden? Sneaky vegetables. Look at this. Do you see this? Here's the size of my hand. That bean is ready to come off. That's Scarlet Runner Bean. That's gorgeous. I guess I better start eating a lot more beans. Where, oh, let's see, that's, oh, that's pretty too. Look at this one, it's huge. And I don't even grow it necessarily for the beans. We already got our beans canned for the year. We bought a box, a case, actually from a grower during the pandemic, but I was growing these. I'll eat these, fr not fresh, but you know what I mean? Without canning. I was growing these for the flowers. They every morning I'd wake up and I, if I have time, which most of the days I do, I just love looking at all these. <laughs> these blooms are just gorgeous. And I let Buddy run around like a madman. Oh, there, there's my Mexican sage. This is my Seminole pumpkin getting out of hand. And I will show you that we have a pumpkin right there. Looks more like a gourd, but there it is. I, I actually had a few, uh-oh. These are blue lake beans. I guess this one's going to seed. Oh, we're just doing fast stuff. Here's a butternut squash growing. I, oh, my moringa's about a whole foot taller. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And I put it in there. Miss Donna, a friend of mine from the horse farm, she gave me a bunch of bromeliads. And we put the, some of them there. Look at this. Butterfly pea. Is that not gorgeous? Oh, I keep forgetting I don't have the stabilization camera. You guys are probably getting dizzy. Oh, this one looks like a double. Hey, bro. This looks like a double bloom one. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Hey, Marilee, if you're watching, these are the red burgundy okra. I have another row, uh, second transplanting, or second seeding. But anyhow, there's your okra seeds that you gave me. This sweet lady from my gardening page, one of my three gardening pages, I believe her name was Lindy, and she just had a bunch of things to share out of her garden. She gave me an aster. I threw it out here and forgot about it. But then I saw these little buds and I said, oh, that's something. Must be something interesting. And I thought, maybe it's a dahlia. Maybe, you know, from last year, something came back. No, it's an aster. And all of a sudden now, I have discovered the world of asters. <laughs> this is gorgeous. It's faded a little bit, but Lindy, if you're watching, thank you so very much for your generosity and sharing your seeds and baby plants with me. The Bennings Green Tent 
is still producing like crazy. Well, okay, not like crazy. That might be exaggerating. But I still have some there. It's still throwing blooms. It looks like crap everywhere else. I probably could use a good trim just to, you know, make it more aesthetically beautiful. But it is still putting out the vegetables or fruit. Squash fruit? I think it's a fruit. Let me know down below. Uh, and here's one of the two big things that keep me out here pretty frequently is I've got cherry tomatoes coming. This is the Napa Chardonnay. Ooh. And I finally had to put a cage, uh, well, stake to hold the cage up because it kept falling over. I have gorgeous sunflowers. Can't wait. We're almost there. I have, ooh, this is about to fall. This is the blue creamsberry. Ah, I'll have to get a steak for that tonight, too. And this is also a cherry tomato plant. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. There they are. They have these beautiful little red, well, they will become like a, a red, a burnt red shoulder. Can you see this okay there? Maybe a little better in the sun. I just love that. Can't wait. I don't have a ripe one yet. But I come out here every day, see new things. I had a couple of the baby watermelon. Uh, I guess they weren't fertile and they d ended up dying, sadly enough. But from a couple videos, do you remember seeing that other watermelon? Here it is. It's nice and big. It's heavy. I don't want to lift it but I put a fruit bag around it too. I got a nice deal on these. I mean, it wasn't like on sale, but uh, I, they're more affordable than you think. $24.99 for 100 bags. They're 12 foot by eight foot, I believe. And they will hold most fruit that you have. And I thought that was worth the investment. And you can reuse them over and over again. I put them all over the pineapples and I will put them on all my watermelons and some of the tomatoes too. This is my Florida pepper plant, and look at the bloom still yet coming on. It may look a lot like a Tabasco plant, uh, but it never gets higher than two feet, we'll say. And it, it, the cold didn't seem to bother. Of course, we didn't get super, super cold. We didn't go below freezing, but it just is so close to the ground. I'm, I don't suppose a light frost would hurt it, and... Um, course I don't know oh my gosh it's been over 15 years since we've seen a actual snow but it looks fantastic over here and it does seem to hold its leaves a lot better through the winter compared to a Tabasco and these suckers are just as hot as any little Tabasco pepper here we're gonna look pan that way you can see my Di dianthus and my cosmos well I'm gonna load up on my cosmos order when I, uh, probably in another month or two, I'm gonna place before all the seed companies shut down for summer and uh, get them so I'll have all my seeds ready for fall. Or at least as many as I can get before fall. Look at that. I believe these are Sunset Publix tomato seeds. I don't know what this teardrop is. I did not. It's a separate plant. There's actually two plants, just so you're not confused. I do not know what this is with the egg-shaped tomatoes. Um, it's supposed to be the same sunset. So I might have just a little either crossbreeding, hybrid stuff going on, or uh, misplaced seed. I don't know. Could have been a transplant of a different kind of seed altogether. Not sure, but I, I like it. It's pretty cool. Well, thank you guys for coming along with me on my garden tour walk tonight. I see a lot of things as I go about and talking to you guys that I would love to fix and so I'm gonna stop it right here and go ahead and start working on my garden as the sun is setting. Thank you guys and I hope you have a blessed Memorial Day weekend. See you in the next one.